Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to show and tell number 196. So it's pretty early in the morning. It is 8, which is, you know, not the earliest I have recorded. But if I'm a little scatterbrained, that might be why. We are still hitting coffee. The cats are right behind you guys. Banner is giving me a look of absolute disgust because I'm sitting here talking to myself. But, um, yeah. So, uh, busy couple of days coming up. I'm not sure what my entire game plan is yet, but I am filming this Thursday morning. I have a Manny Petty coming up. I am in desperate need of a professional pedicure because I have not been taking care of my feet at all in the course of this move. So I'm very excited to go get a Manny Petty, and that is at 9 a.m. So I have approximately half an hour to film this and get out the door. So, yay. Um, tomorrow is Friday, August 11th, and I am going to be at the Southern Comforts Fiber Market, which I am super looking forward to. I have not decided whether or not I'm going to be spending the night in Charlotte or coming back to Columbia tomorrow night yet. It's all gonna depend on how I feel or if I think I'm gonna have some FOMO of not purchasing something that I see there. I am coming in early so I can film some content of the booths and the venue area. Banner left because he's mad that I'm talking. Um, I will be coming in an hour early so I can film the booths and venue area and stuff before it starts to get really packed. But I do plan on trying to give you guys tours of a lot of these vendors. Most of them have online shops. So if there's something you see in the video that you are interested in, please definitely go check out their shops. I will have Saturday my unboxing of ALC and Yarnable. On Tuesday, I will probably try, I'm going to aim to have my walk through of the Southern Comforts Fiber Market. I also am aiming to try to get some uh, videos posted on Instagram on Friday and Saturday of the event, depending on if I stay set for Saturday or not. Uh, I will be purchasing the two-day ticket just because I want that option. Uh, we do not have an offer on the house in Charlotte yet. It is still on the market. So if you know anybody who's looking for a three-bedroom in Charlotte, uh, anyway, so that is going on. We have our official move date, so we will be packing out of Charlotte the first full week of September, and we will be moving into the house maybe at the end of that week, maybe the following week. We're not quite sure yet. It'll all depend on what the move team decides they want to do or what they think they can get done. So we will, we do have some stuff already packed. The non-breakable stuff is already packed but there's still a lot of packing to be done. I really want to get my yarn packed myself so I can pack it in an organized fashion that even before I have the craft room ready or the yarn room ready, I can go ahead and have access to those things quickly. It's still gonna, they're probably still gonna end up in boxes and stuff, so I want to have access to them quickly, but maybe not necessarily on the yarn wall. So lots of stuff going on. Lots of things are going to be happening as soon as this next week is over with. So I am aiming to finish one more granny blanket before we start the process of moving into the new house. Because um, I just have the blocks for one more. I do have a couple extra blocks. So this one might be a slightly longer blanket. I haven't decided yet. Um, we have the Southern Comforts Yarn Festival. <sighs> There's just so much, guys. There is so much going on. I know you guys understand. I know you guys know, but it's just so much to keep track of. And then I get text messages periodically when there are viewings of the house, and I have to make sure that I turn off the alarm and the internal cameras and everything else. So it's just a lot. There is a lot going on. And it's really funny because there are com all the comments on our house that we're selling is great house, love it. The spaces just don't work for us. And that's something, you know, we can't fix. We can't fix that the spaces don't work for a buyer. We can fix paint. We can fix carpet. We can even fix a roof, but we cannot fix the floor plan of the house. So 
we knew it was weird. We knew it would take a little while. It was on the market at least 30 days when we purchased it and the market in Charlotte was still hot even then, but we are heading towards the end of the season. And that does make us just a little bit nervous how long this is going to sit on the market, but it is what it is. Once we're out of the house, we can kind of just let it coast. We can decide what we want to do after we're out of the house, if there's changes we want to make or things we want to do. But as it stands, there's it's just the hurry up and wait game for that. So I have a lot of stuff I want to show you guys this show and tell. I have had my fingers in a ton of projects. Um, first off. Y'all have already seen my unboxing and month or month three kind of quickie review recap of my Arkansas Yarn Company box. So I want to share with you guys. Oh, I did forget the shawl. I forgot the shawl. Well, I'll show you this and then I'll pause the video and go get the shawl. But month three, I have already started working here. So this is the Escherite Cowl. And that is by RemadeByHand.com, Aaron Krupp. Krupp. Escherite as in uh, MC Escher. This was one of the shawls I had actually drawn initially, or towels I had initially drawn to do with month two's yarn. I do kind of want to come back if I like the pattern and do a slightly larger version. I am very broad, as I have said, shoulder to shoulder. So getting something that's like poncho-esque on me, I do need extra yarn normally because I'm going to need more increases shoulder to shoulder. But I do want to see how this one fits before I make any decision on that. I still have my purple poncho. I did bring that down here that I'm also working on, but I haven't touched that since we've been down here. Um, but I'm, I just started the lace pattern. I have the first couple rows of that done, and this is the top edge of the cowl here. So I'm doing the horizontal version. There are two different versions. You can do the horizontal version or the vertical version of the yarn overs. So they either come from the center and work their way out, or it all kind of goes in a straight line. So I did decide to do the horizontal version. It is a very basic lace pattern. You don't have to be able to follow the graph. There are written directions. So if this is a pattern you're interested in, definitely go check it out. I think it's beautiful. I think it's going to work up absolutely stunning in this yarn. I did share a picture after I caked the yarn up on Instagram. So if you guys saw Tuesday's video and saw the unboxing, you will have seen what this looked like in the hank. I kind of wish I had taken a picture because somehow it's even more beautiful in the cake than it was when I initially was looking at the hank. That does happen sometimes where I'm just like, it's even better than I thought. So I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying how this is working up absolutely gorgeous, but we are pretty early on the pattern. So we'll see how the pattern goes. All patterns will be in the description box down below. Let me go grab that shawl real quick and I'll be right back. Of course, as soon as I sit down, my stack like slides down behind me. So this is the Blackberry Crescent shawl. I have been showing you guys working progress on this. So for this shawl, this is pretty much how I'm going to wear it. Occasionally, I can toss it over my shoulders if I want to, but I will be wearing it probably more as a scarf. I did make one change on it, though. I did stop the pattern itself a little early, so I had enough yarn to do a I-cord bind-off along the bottom edge. So I will need to block this once we are into the new house, but one skein of fingering weight yarn. The top edge is at least five and a half feet, which I think is fantastic. That is a good length on that. It makes it a perfect scarf length as scarves are supposed to be your height. And I am five foot five, so, or five, four and three quarters, but it is wide enough on the sides to just kind of use as a pop over your shoulders kind of look. And you still have enough length here to pin it or do something more interesting with the sides if you want to. If you wanted to kind of pop it on sideways, you could very easily 
since it's unblocked, that edge is a little unwieldy. But you could definitely wrap it to where the widest part's on one shoulder and use a shawl pin to pin it to the side to give you a nice look. So there are lots of different ways you can wear a crescent shawl. Just like with a triangle shawl, you can make it as artful as you want. I do know one lady that frequently wears them kind of more like sashes. That's not quite my mojo, not quite my style, but it is a very attractive way to do it. So this is month two, Arkansas Yarn Company Sock Yarn Society. That was the project that I did with that yarn. So very, very happy with that. I really like this pattern quite a bit. Once again, in the description box down below. So the yarn worked out perfectly in this. I really love how this worked out. So kind of a preview for Saturday's video. I did start another one. And this is using this month's Yarnable in Glow with the Flow. And just because I thought a nice fall shawl would be nice. So I am, I am struggling with the lights here because I cannot get the light balance right between the ring light and what natural light I'm getting down here. But that's where we are. The yarn is absolutely stunning. This is what it looked like caked up. So there's like flecks of green, brown, and gold. The base of the yarn is mostly a soft butter yellow color. So while that's not necessarily a color I would normally wear around my face because it kind of makes me look a little sallow, I was looking for something to wear with maybe a brown t-shirt or a brown top for the fall. So I did start another Blackberry Crescent shawl that I will just kind of slowly work on over the next couple weeks. Also, this is a very easy pattern for me to work on as we're going through the transition and stuff. So a little bit of thinking and making notes, but not a whole lot of thinking. I do think I want to use the I-Cord bind off once again though, because I do really like how that finished the edge. I was considering trying to do the top edge as well with a I-Cord bind or I-Cord edging, but I really didn't feel like thinking about it that hard. So that was a no-go. So it'll have the same top edge as the previous one I did. And I will do the I-Cord bind off for the bottom. So Zeph happened in my also worked on this week. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen where I picked up my granny square scrap. I did a stupid project. So the last time you guys saw it, I had just finished this square. I think this is the same square I used for the tutorial that I did on this. So I had not touched it since then. This blue square down here was my very first square. So now I have worked my way up two whole rows plus finished this row. And these are just using under 10 gram fingering weight scraps from previous projects. So I'm very happy with how this is turning out. Um, this row, I kind of wanted every single square to be different. Well, I started on this side. Every single square to be different. This one, every square has the same pattern. It's a one, two, two, one. And then this one, we did solid, uh, multicolor, solid, multicolor, solid, multicolor. So definitely had a lot of fun with that. So now we're five rows in. I don't think I will have enough scrap yarn to finish this off this year, but we will take it as far as we can. I do still have a lot of scraps in my bag. And of course, I'm still making scraps. I did have a very small scrap left over from the Dragon Board. Or I am dragon. I don't see it immediately on the top here. There we go. So that is going to be a square in here. That was my tiny scrap ball left of that. So for the size shawl I did, this is all I had left over of that yarn. And I think it was like six grams maybe. I don't even know if it was six grams. I did also go ahead and split month one's yarn off. 
I saved a 20 gram ball of it in the box and then this is what was left over after that. So, or 10 grams, 10 grams. So there's a 10 gram ball that will go to my 10 gram scrap bag and then there's that little ball left over. So I am trying to weigh out my scraps and measure them into projects as I go or into their sets as I go, which once again makes me feel a little OCD, but I have my larger balls in here and then my smaller bits are still in the bottom of the bag. So as I'm going, I'm kind of taking them as far as I can. Oh, my scissors got knocked out of my bag here. This bag is another bag from Christy Hudson over at T Doddles. And this bag was a gift from Debbie the Canadian Crutcheter. So if you are not familiar with Debbie's channel, go check out Debbie. And definitely go check out Christy over at T Doddles. I will tag them in the description box down below. Um, but Christy has an Etsy shop that she sells her bags from. So if you're interested in like the gnome bag you guys saw the other day or like this, this is one of her mini maker bags. The gnome bag is one of her maker bags. I have a number of Christy's bags. I love them and I adore her fabric choices. The only reason I did not do her maker bag of the year again this year is because I have so many of her bags at this point, but I do use them. A lot of times like this where I'm trying to separate things out and kind of keep things a little organized um, I will also use them instead of sock sacks or um, skin cozies things like that to hold like if I'm doing multiples of things I will use those mini maker bags for that a lot of the time too but but a bing but a boom I'm not sure where my little, I also have a plastic bag of the started squares, but I'm not quite sure where that is. That's not a good thing to lose. Shawl. Nope, nothing there. <coughs> I don't know where I set that. Oh, there it is. It just fell out of the bag when my bag tipped over. So these are just the started squares. So as I'm coming across... I can pop an extra square like I have some of them started so there are times where like it's taking me forever and then there are other times where like instantly I have a square so it, the the progress is a little wonky there but definitely having fun with that project I also had time to do a cozy or scrubby and this is just using half double crochets finished in a crab stitch as well as another lemon peel dishcloth. On Saturday, we went to the Soda City Market downtown in Columbia and we ate some really nami nami food. I have not had an arepa since the first year we moved to Charlotte. So I did get myself an arepa. I have paid my consequences for the Kirby delicious cheesy goodness that was that. There are now like four Venezuelan food people. There is a Thai. Uh, we did bring paella home for dinner. And there was somebody else really interesting that we didn't get. Oh, um, there were Korean hot dogs. And we did not, or Korean corn dogs. We did not get those. But... I did make an arts purchase. So, y'all know I'm all into quirky art. This is from Bee Bottom Art. And I will leave her Instagram. I will try to remember to leave her Instagram as well as her website in the description box down below. But she has some very quirky art pieces. Not all of them are quite this quirky. But I did purchase this. So I actually died laughing. I that she's got little mini arts that are on um, watercolor card or watercolor paper that have little hangers on them, so kind of like a little little pennant. Then she has pieces like this. She has magnets, bags, t-shirts, stickers. She has her artwork on a lot of different mediums. But um, 
I actually stopped for the Sasquatch and ended up purchasing the alien abduction cat. So very, very cute. I will be probably hanging that in the craft room at the new house just because it's adorable and silly and funny. I like it. Oh, dude. Apparently a lot of stuff spilled out of my... I keep scooching back and finding stuff behind my pulkas. So, if you follow me on Instagram, yesterday you will have seen where I was working on another granny square blanket, and I did finish it by the end of the night last night. So, I will try to get a picture of this laid out. This one is two-tone variegated with a solid alternating. So, once again, it's a little bit more planned out. And once again, I just did the two row granny, granny stitches to uh, finish off the edge. So this was another 1140, 1149, 1149 grams of yarn used up. I am still using the one pound, uh, pound of love from Lion Brand in Oxford Gray. I have one more skein of it, but I don't think I'm going to need that because I only have one more left to go and I still have about half a ball left over. It takes about 500 grams for me to join these. So the squares I have set aside for the next blanket already have their ends woven in. They are ready to go. So it should take about four hours to join, four working hours to join this blanket together unless I decide to grab the other five squares I have in there and join those in too and just make a slightly larger blanket. This one would be a five by five instead of a four by five square. So these squares are made out of worsted weight acrylic yarn. These are leftovers and scraps from previous projects. The finished edge on these is right at maybe a foot, just shy of a foot, between 10 and 12 inches. But it makes a perfect, just larger than a lapgan size blanket when I do the two rows of grannies to finish them off. So, I have definitely had my fingers in a lot of projects over the last week. I cannot complain with the time that I have been getting to do some crafting over the last couple weeks. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Definitely, if you're in the area, come to the Southern Comforts Fiber Market. That's the 11th and 12th of August. If you can't make it up for the Southern Comforts Fiber Market, the Charlotte area yarn crawl is also coming up at the end of the month. I will not be participating in that as we, I think the week that's going on is going to be kind of busy for us. So I will not be participating in the Charlotte area yarn crawl this year. I did find out that there is a new yarn store here that was not here when I moved or it's been bought out since I moved. I'm not sure which. So we used to have a shop over here in Irmo, South Carolina, and it was never open. Um, the woman who owned it, her and her son both were of very poor health and it was never open. And I'm not sure if this is the same shop I never made it into that shop, but I was looking at what they have and they have, they appear to have some Barocco. They have um, some of the Universal yarns and Queensland yarns. So I'm not sure like what else they have. They do also apparently have a Knit Night and they are just down the street from me on St. Andrews Road. So they're not that far. So depending on what my schedule looks like over the next couple weeks, I definitely plan on hitting them up and seeing what they have because I would kind of like to have a new LYS to go to. When I was looking online, I did notice that there are a couple of different fabric stores I don't remember. I never spent a whole lot of time in Irmo before. It It's not a bad part of town. Like it's, it's, but it, from where we lived, it was kind of difficult to get over here, especially like on Saturdays and Sundays. So we almost never spent that much time in Irma. About once a year, twice a year, we'd come out here, you know, to go to Guitar Center or to go to the big mall over here or something. But 
we never really spent that much time in Irmo. So there will be new things for me to explore on this side of town just because I never really spent that much time out here to begin with. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoy the adventure with me. I cannot wait to share with you guys the vendors at the Southern Comforts Fiber Market. We have a lot of repeats coming in. Hillside is going to be back. I was looking at the vendor list. Um, Yarn Yogi is going to be back. I did not see Apothecary, so she apparently is not coming this year. Um, there was somebody else really interesting, and I can't remember who it was. Hand Eye Diva just made an announcement that they're only going to do wholesale from now on. And it's because she's been getting so many orders from yarn shops that want to sell her yarn. And I don't think they ever reopened their shop in Huntersville after they had so many issues with that. So it looks like she's moved to a wholesale yarn business only. So I don't think she's coming now. But there's like 45 vendors that are going to be there. Um, Dusty is going to be there, the button lady. Um, Meridian Mill House is supposed to be there. And I think they're, they're coming as Meridian Wool. I've ordered a couple of things from them. If you were a dyer, they had some absolutely gorgeous yarn bases. And their new sparkle base that they brought out last year, I think it's the Sugar Mountain is the one that, that is the sparkle. It is so pretty. They also have one that has a silver metallic ply to it. Uh, it's plied in versus like this, which has like the little, sh this that has like the shots of sprinkles through it, the shots of sparkle through it. So anyway, very excited. I'll just leave the ring light off for now. Y'all can deal with the shadows. I'm sure that doesn't bother 99% of you guys. Um, but yeah, I am mega super duper excited. I can't wait to see what is out, what is going on, and what people are bringing. There are a number of people who are dying custom skeins. I believe Charlotte Yarn and Yarn Studio, which is the one I couldn't remember the other day, both have custom skeins or custom hanks for this event. So maybe I'll just collect those. I did purchase the t-shirt pattern that I shared with you guys. I did get all three variations of it to get my little $7 off for all three. So it was $20 for three sweater patterns. Um, there's a DK weight, a fingering weight that are kind of more or less identical. And then there's another one. So I will have to make a decision as to which variation I want. I do want one of the reversible V-necks definitely. Um, but it's five fingering weights to do the sweater as written. I might purchase six just in case to get around my girth here. I need a little extra yarn. So I'm very, very excited. I do want to be mindful as I'm making my purchases on Friday. Um, but if I think I'm going to have some FOMO, I might over purchase just to come back to Columbia Friday night. Or I might take the risk and come back on Saturday. I don't know yet. I don't know. But I am so excited. I keep seeing all of the fender bits and clips. of. There's one that did a gorgeous teal and mustard color set. And I'm kind of like, it's, little, it's a little pop of something saucy. It's a very, very basic thing. And then you've got that pop of mustard. I don't know why, but it really was kind of speaking to me in the pictures. So we'll see what happens. Other than that, you guys... I am going to hit the road. I, my appointment is in 12 minutes. They're literally five minutes down the road. So I need to grab my wallet, and my keys, and my little tote bag of cotton yarn so I have something to work on while they do my pedicure. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I love you guys, and I will see you real soon. Please take care and definitely come back on Saturday to check out the unboxing of the ALC and the Yarnable because there's so much more to share than just that piece of yarn. Love you guys.